Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 227. This is the tag that you want to use GRE 10E for the 10th edition of the book. Page 227. The problem that I'm solving right now are, are, are called quantitative comparison, where you're given two quantities and you're asked to compare them. Quantitative comparison question, QC, hence the, hence the QC, number three. Let's take a look at it. It's supposed to be an easy question because there are 15 questions here. Uh, this is from the old-fashioned paper and pencil exam where the problems are arranged in the order of difficulty, which is no longer the case when you take the exam because now nowadays they are now no longer paper and pencil, they are computer adaptive. The difficulty level of the question adapts with according to the ability of the person taking the exam. It's more of an interactive thing as opposed to just a passive paper and pencil where they give you and they all arrange in order. Let's take a look at it. It's number three, it's easy questions. 87% of the people who took the exam got this particular question correct. Let's take a look at it. They give you a picture, they give you a geometry picture. This angle we are told is 50. This angle we are told is R. This angle is S. Let's see what is it that we are asked to compare. We are asked to compare 3 times R versus S. As I told you before, this is a very simple problem which, which would explain the fact that vast majority of the people, 87% of people got this question correct. And the reason is very simple. As you can see, this is 50 degrees. This angle and this angle are known as vertical angles. They are also sometimes referred to as opposite angles. And they are equal. Hence, if this is 50, then R is 50. And therefore, 3 times R would be 150. Now let's take a look at S. S is again very straightforward because S sits on a straight line. This is our straight line here. And of course, we know that the sum of the angles on a straight line is 180. If I have a straight line here, this is 180. And if part of that is 50, then the remaining has to be 130, which is my S. This S is 130 because this is 50. So this is 130. That's it, we're done. The answer is A. The answer is A. The quantity in column A is bigger because in column A we have 150 degrees. In column B we have 130 degrees. Or to be more precise, what we have in column A and B are not degrees but rather 150 versus 130. Because it doesn't have the tiny symbol of the degrees in the, in the thing. It doesn't really matter. That was it. The answer is, answer is A. Let's take a look at number 4. Let's see what number four has to say. Number four says we have a quantity negative two raised to eight versus negative and then two raised to eight. Again, this is a very simple, straightforward problem. 88% of the people who took the exam got this question right, which, is, which uh, as a matter of fact, turns out to be a greater percentage then the percentage of the people who got number one right. Number one was uh, done correctly by 87% of the people who took the exam. Number four was done correctly by 88% of the people. Let's take a look at it. Because the negative sign is inside the parentheses, what we have is negative two times negative two times negative two, uh, negative two being multiplied by itself eight times. And each time you multiply negative two by a negative two, it becomes positive, positive four. So this is, since this is even number, uh, a negative number raised to an even power it stays an even, uh, a negative number being raised to an even power remains remains a pos becomes a positive number a negative 2 raised to 2 would be negative 2 times negative 2 which of course is positive 4 and if I were to make this 4 this will be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 it will still be positive positive number a positive 16 on the other hand this one 
the quantities themselves are same whatever the 2 raised to 8 is which is the same quantity here except here the negative 2 because it appears in the parentheses the whole quantity becomes positive here it remains negative therefore the answer is A you don't have to actually waste your time trying uh, figuring out what, what 2 raised to negative 8 is that is not the point here these questions are called quantitative comparison just give me a second I'll be right back These questions are called quantitative comparison. Let me let me erase this thing and emphasize emphasize the fact here. These questions are not called quantitative computation. These are called these are called Comparison. You should supposed to compare the two quantities. There is no need to sit there and compute the bloody thing. That's not that's not the point of the problem here. That's all. Just realize that this is a negative number, this is a positive number. That's all you need. What the number itself is is is, is, is irrelevant. It's just immaterial. I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring or if you wish to buy my solution manuals for these problems, uh, go to my website at www.prep P R E P Prep F O R 4 GRE.com and send me an email. Alright? Thank you.